Hello, everybody. Welcome again to another episode of the Two and Two Podcast. I'm here with Blake. How's it going, Blake? Good, good. I'm enjoying our little Christmas outfits yes. we got going yeah. here today. This, this was not planned, folks, but it <laughs> works really well for our December episode <laughs> of the does. Two and Two Podcast. <laughs> So, um, and so this week, what we're going to be diving into um, is how do we live out the Great Commission at home? Uh, you know, I'm, we, we've got a couple different perspectives here. You have your girls that are now out of the home. You're I've calling got, me old. You're old. You're the old one. I'm the young one, but I'm the one with all the gray hair, which is <laughs> kind of odd. Um, but then I still have my three at home. And so we're still working through. What does discipling them look like? What are things that have worked? What hasn't worked? And so I'm excited to learn from you a little bit more. You know, I've, I've had the chance over the past nine years to be able to not only see you put um, parenting in action, um, but to also see you let go as they've they've moved into I'm adulthood. Trying. Letting go. Yeah. And now about to really let go <laughs> once about really to get married. Go. So, yes. you know, it, it, that's been a blessing to see a part of that. So I'm excited to, to pass on some of that. Yeah learnt knowledge and wisdom and even dive into what Scripture says uh, about this. So um, the first part of this, let's talk about what what has that looked like um, for you and Sean to, to disciple Brooke and, and Autumn to make sure that they um, know who the Lord is, that, that, that they grow up to um, love Him the way that y'all have loved Him, and, and even to see their faith come their own. Yeah. Um, what are some things that... that have worked for y'all? What are some things that, that just fell flat? Yeah, well, the, I think the first thing we need to say is that there there are no guarantees, right? Right. We, um, I mean, we have been blessed with our girls, but, um, you know, there, there's there's no magic formula, but there are things, I think, that, that we can seek to do. And, um, you know, especially as they're young. And by the way, it never ends either. I mean, right. it's a, you know, it's an ongoing process, even though they're, you know, adults now. And as you mentioned, Brooke's about to get married here uh, as we film this in just a few weeks. So, um, but looking back to the time when they were, when they were younger, I'll start with what didn't work because, uh, especially with our kids being pastor's kids, I've always been maybe a little extra sensitive to not wanting them to feel like they got a sermon right. all the time with every issue or everything that came up and that kind of thing. And so I, I was probably extra sensitive to that, but, um, we also obviously, our faith is really important to us, and we we want to pass that on. We want to disciple our kids, and and so figuring out what that looked like was a challenge because in our setting, trying to do the you know let's have dinner and then maybe we'll sit around uh, the table together and uh, you know do it a devotional or talk about this. Or that. That didn't work. Right. <laughs> it just didn't go very well for us. It didn't seem to 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 connect. You know, there. You know, we got the eye rolls and the <laughs> you know the whole bit that comes with that sometimes. So here comes uh, Pastor Dad again. Yes, here comes Pastor Dad, <laughs> Pastor Dad, and Preacher Mom. You know, they they had them both. So um, yeah, that was I, that was a, a learning experience and a challenge because quite honestly, at times I feel like I'm failing as a parent because right. this model. That you know, I had heard you're supposed to be able to do. Yeah, you know, we still were able to to do things creatively once in a while. That just didn't seem to work so well. But second part of your question was, you know, what what did work or what does work? And I, yeah, I have a, a scripture that that I think has been really helpful in guiding me through um, my understanding of that. And it comes from Deuteronomy six, and it says, starting in verse four, it says, "Hero." O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. So that's the goal, right? right. We, we want that for ourselves. We want it for our kids. But then it says, these commands that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. And so to me, what that says is really what was most effective for us and what I, I think not be careful what I say here. I'm not saying doing devotionals all and things like that is is a bad thing. It's a very good thing, but I think it's it's even more important to have that be just a part of everyday life, right? Part of regular conversations and just kind of as we go, you know, um, working those things in, talking about, um, you know, what we see God doing. Maybe a, a certain if we could sneak in something of here's something God taught me where it doesn't sound uh, too much like saying yeah. listen to another sermon. So. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of been where where we've been. Where what about you? Where where yeah. do you find yourself with your? So I think the the biggest thing for us is just like you hit on that as well is is 
I need a lot of grace as a, a parent, especially as a pastor. Mm-hmm. And I know our children's volunteers need that same grace as they're, yeah. Yeah. you know, they're investing into a lot of kids, uh, but they're also investing into their own kids and yeah. they, our student volunteers and things like that. Like, I, I just, I need to hear that grace. So it was really comforting for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and the biggest thing that we found out, so our boys are just, are recent, have recently made the decision yep. to follow Christ, recently yeah. been baptized. Yeah. Um, and we've also fought against, like, I don't want their concept of Christianity to be just church. Mm-hmm. Um, and so having to be intentional with that, but also realizing early on that we have to um, find a way uh, to be able to, like you said before, um, just it be an overflow of who we are. Right. Uh, and then exactly. also realizing, like, things might work for a season, and then it might be time to switch up what you do. And I think that's been the biggest revelation for us. Um, so early on when they were young, uh, you know, we had different children's Bibles. And we have our, yeah. our one children's Bible that we've just worn out. Like the, the back is broken on it. We've read through it uh, a thousand times. And that was great. But there was a season when that those bedtime stories, right. it, it ended. Yeah, um, yeah it was and, a lot easier when it was bedtime story yeah. time. You know, you, yeah. you have a captive audience, plus they don't want to go to sleep. It right. was like my kids, so they'll, yeah. they'll listen That's to That's the either. one that they'll stay up for the Bible. <laughs> exactly. Maybe we need to switch church to, to <laughs> like Saturday nights at that's, 10 p.m. That's true. The kids, <laughs> the little ones would be interested for sure. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that was the biggest thing for us. So we've gone through several different progressions. We've gone through um, just reading the Bible together mm-hmm. and, and just talking to them uh, about that. And the end result is, you know, they know the books of the Bible. They know the difference in the Old Testament. New Testament. And it's neat to see that in six-year-olds. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't something like, we want you to learn every single book of the Bible. It became a progression of just things that we tried. Right. And then YouTube became a huge resource for mm-hmm. us in discipling our kids. Churches all across the, the country um, put their children's ministry curriculums and, and things out there. Um, yep. And so there's one particular um, one's called uh, Kids on the Move. It's a church that they put their, a lot of their Bible stories are animated. And mm-hmm. that really connected with the kids. So there'd be three minute videos and then right. I could talk about that. That's and really so good. we've tried that. And, you know, we, there's a friend of mine in the church that uh, he wanted his kids to learn through uh, teaching of him. So they love songs. So they sing songs at night and then talk about the, the scriptural importance of those songs and the right. faith part of it. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think it's, there's no, you know, I've had people tell me, it's like, you know, limit the screen time. You don't want them to watch that. But it's like YouTube for this particular time, that's one of the major resources we have to be able to share and, and talk about our faith. And, and there's going to be a season when that comes to a close and then we'll try something else. And, right. you know, not being burdened by, oh, this isn't working right now, so we just don't do anything. Right. Uh, yeah, but again, huge. the overarching goal is, like you said, I think it just being an overflow right. of who we are. Right. Yeah, and you know, as, as you were saying that too, it just kind of made me think, as they, it is, there are different seasons, right? You do have, when they're younger, um, a little bit more of a captive audience, maybe a little bit more interest mm-hmm. in that kind of thing. As they get older, sometimes there's that normal you know, kind of separation and pulling away a little bit and things like that. And one of the things that, that just has really been on my mind as I've been thinking about this is the importance of the relationship that you build with your kids yeah. just in general, you know, just just building a relationship, spending time together. Because I've found looking back, the best spiritual conversations that we had were always unplanned yeah. and they were always on my kids' schedule. You know, if I was doing something with them or kind of when they were feeling comfortable. And in fact, just this very morning as we're filming this, my oldest daughter, who's 23 now, uh, called me to ask a question. And before we hung up, said, hey, can I give you something to pray about? And shared some things with me. We prayed together and then she shared some more stuff with me. But it just made me think that's when it happens, right? I was not expecting that phone call. I wasn't expecting that. But based on the relationship, I think that open some doors for us. So I think that's important yeah. too. I think that's huge. I, I always picture the moment like when when my kids would make a decision to pursue mm-hmm. the Lord that it would come in this like deep devotional time and, or, <laughs> right. or like, you know, we're reading the Bible together and they just would look at me and be like, you know, Daddy, I want to make this decision. And it came at a time where we're eating hamburgers at the dinner table and I'm about to run out the door 
and it was like, hey, I have this question, mm-hmm. and it it sparked um, this long conversation about what faith is and who God right. is, and totally unexpected moment. And then, yep. you know, I think slowing down so you're able to to catch those moments are are such an important part of, of who we are as believers is just understanding that your kids are your number one priority and, and that if you can uh, invest in them and nothing's guaranteed, but if you can raise them up um, and, and teach them the way that you've been taught and, and yeah. love them that um, you might see their ministry be something you never expected. And right. I saw that with your girls and, you know, there's, there's, Kids that are not kids anymore, they're, they're young adults that are believers because they just brought them to church with them mm-hmm. or, or invested in them. And some of them are here on Sunday mornings and helping. And, and if it wasn't for those impromptu moments, you know, they wouldn't recognize those impromptu moments when they had to, to be able to bring friends to church with them as well. And, right. you know, it's, it's being able to step back and look at those moments and be like, okay, God was at work in that, I think is huge too. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk for a few minutes. Uh, you know, I think that's a, a, important, a lot of important things as we talk about uh, living out the Great Commission at home. Um, I think church does play an important it does. role in that and aspect Absolutely. that we want to live in community and be able to glean off of other parents. And, and mm-hmm. you know, I have my accountability group and, and some families in our church that I trust that I can ask and say, hey, what are you doing with your kid? And it, it has like, okay, that didn't work for mine. What does this yep. work for yours? And that we can bounce those things by uh, each other. Um, it's been fruitful for me as a young parent uh, to see how you and Sean have, have raised your kids and even the, the good, bad, and the ugly. A lot of times we'd have your kids would knock on our door in the hard times, you know, and that's... <laughs> Go we're, complain we're about house. us to yeah. you. Yes, yes. yes. That, that, Glad they had that outlet. <laughs> but we got to, to see that, that, you know, parenting isn't always perfect. Right. And being a Christian isn't always perfect. Um, but church is a resource and an opportunity Mm -hmm. to be able to, where I have shortcomings, the biblical community that we exist in can fill in a lot of those gaps. Right. And I think that's really important. So let's talk about that for a little bit. Like what role does the church play in helping the, the families and helping the parents in our church be able to disciple their kids effectively? Yeah, I think it's huge. I mean, it's the same role the church plays in our lives individually, yeah. right? It, it, we're surrounded by other believers for a reason. God never designed us to walk the Christian life alone. And so just as you know, having people like y'all and, and others that, that we're close to surrounding us, it helps us. It helps our kids, too. So our kids need to see that. I, I think as much as anything... Um, you know, there's certainly input that they're getting from other people. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, especially when our kids were teenagers, if they really had an issue, they would talk to somebody else about it right. a lot of times before they would talk to us about it. Uh, and these were other adults in their lives that they respected spiritually. And I knew that what they were going to hear from them is exactly what I would have said had they come to me. And it's, it, that's helpful, you yeah. know, having that that relate. But again, it goes back to relationships. Those were developed over time mm-hmm. because they were apart and because they got to know. And they just kind of. I think there's something to be said for our kids growing up with just. It's normal that we do life with other believers. Yeah. That we surround ourselves with other people. We have those relationships even outside of church. You know, we're doing things with other Christian families, and we may not be always talking about a Bible verse or whatever, yeah. but we're we're looking at things from the same perspective. Those relationships are there. Questions can be asked. So, yeah, I think the church is a huge resource for families. It doesn't take the place of parenting right. because that's our, you know, we're the primary disciple makers in our home. But man, is that a great resource to have? And you know, it just it it really makes my heart sad when I see kids and families that don't have that right. because I know how much it can mean. Yeah, I think that's such a important element of discipling our kids is the the church aspect. And I think sometimes the point of view of what church is is like we go on Sunday mm-hmm. um, and we it's it's a great thing to do. Um, you know, chipping away at that concept and understanding like Mm -hmm. it it could be your involvement in the local body um, is a, is a game changer when it comes to discipling your kids and, and for your own spiritual health 
um, as well. And just like you said, I, I don't think, you know, we're very early on in our experience as parents um, with our, our boys are six, going to be seven soon. Um, and, you know, we have 11 more years yeah. with them. And like, that's going to go by relatively quickly, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I can't imagine making it these six years without the investment that others have made in them yeah. as well. Um, and it's such an important concept. And just thinking through talking with Stephanie and just mm-hmm. the how she views children's ministry and just seeing it as a resource and an opportunity to be able to let these kids um, live out their faith, whether it's inviting friends to church, whether it's um, coming to know the Lord. You know, we had two Wednesdays ago, we had 21 kids yeah. make a decision to follow yeah. Christ. That's amazing. Um, because of what the, the Holy Spirit moved in that, that children's mm-hmm. ministry in the local body. Um, and now the next step is we're able to equip help equip those parents to be able to take those next steps. And she does a great job with that. Um, her, uh, the class that she offers, the I'm a Christian now class that yeah. my boys went through as well. If it wasn't for that class, I don't know if I would have been able to, um, really communicate it as well as those volunteers did in that class, mm-hmm. um, for my boys at that time. And just, again, I'm the, the main, Natalie and I are the main disciple makers but having others that love them like we love them as well. So important. And then Taylor being in student ministry and, you know, I was in student ministry for 16 years and I love it and I still love it. And the opportunities I had to be able to lock arms with students whose parents were not believers Mm -hmm. and to see how the local body uh, locked arms with them for me to be able to lock arms with parents as they were walking through hard times with their student um, and being able to be a resource to them. And it's just neat because I hear this time and time again, uh, and now I hear it with Taylor as our student pastor, if parents will say, like, he said something that I've said a 100 times, yeah. and it just didn't resonate. And just to have that as a resource I think is so important. Um, and that's where the local body it mm-hmm. plays a, a uh, just integral part in discipling our kids. And I love our church, and I I... I I am deeply in love with the people that are here that get to invest alongside of us. That What a blessing that is. Um, and so I just want to encourage those that, that don't have that Absolutely. or haven't taken a step to uh, really use the local body as a resource mm-hmm. uh, to take that step because you're going to need it. And just in the six years of the boy's life and now Carly being two, um, I don't know where we'd be without it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, we've talked about, um, you know, making sure we're living out the Great Commission in our home. Yeah. Uh, a huge aspect of that is just living it out and letting them see it. Um, and we've talked about uh, giving grace to parents that, that sometimes things work. So what works for one family might not work for another, uh, but, but giving yourself grace, but also not giving up. Uh, you That's know, good. one of the biggest things that I always would tell uh, families is like when they're young, you want to really hold them tight and teach them and, and make sure they they know right from wrong and know who the Lord is. And then you start to give slack as they get older. And I think so many families make the mistake of they give them a lot of slack when they're younger. And then when they're older, they're trying to rein them back in. And it just doesn't work that way. Right. Um, and so taking a step to, to be able to disciple our kids are huge. Uh, is there really any last encouragement that, that you want to give our, our folks that are listening today? I think what you said is just don't give up. Stay with it. It's, you know, it's the greatest investment that you'll ever make is investing and discipling your kids. And, yeah, we're here for you. you know, we want to be that resource. We want to be that support and encouragement. But keep it up. Yep. My encouragement. Yeah. And all those, uh, families that I got to invest in, in student ministry for, for such a long time that, that thank me for coming alongside of them. And, and, you know, I'd always I'm tell one them, of them, you're one of them. <laughs> I would always tell them there's going to be a time when I'm going to need you for my kids and it's coming. It's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's already here. So get ready. So your encouragement is to keep going, but now you get to help raise my kids. <laughs> so, uh, but church again, thank you so much for who you are for, for our church to live in, biblical community and to lean on one another. Just just um, keep doing what you're doing, and whatever you're doing, give a little bit more. Um, 
and, and that's my biggest encouragement. And um, also, if you don't mind, make sure you hit the subscription bell. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, like and share on on Facebook. You can watch us on Spotify, all these different uh, places that you can can watch our podcast, that you can listen to our podcast. We hope it's a great uh, resource for for you at home. And thank you again for for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.